to thank you for showing up in person. I want to uh, also thank the folks that uh, show up on the uh, live feed. And we have many people that watch our services after the fact, after they go to their own church in some other town, they'll pull us up and watch our service. So God bless them. It's wonderful. We are having some technical difficulties with our internet this morning. So, for instance, our credit card machine is not working because we have no internet. We're streaming off our phone this morning. So pray that, that will, the phone will fall off or something. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we've got them coming to uh, repair our internet tomorrow, so we should be back on track. So I want to thank you. So if you would like, if you had intended to give using the credit card machine, please go and use our church app. Uh, it works without the internet. It's fine. I just uh, gave myself and uh, checked to make sure it was working. Okay, so uh, this morning, um, I, I, I just really have been excited about, I've been, I've been in, inundating myself in the book of Daniel for the last month and a half, and, uh, and I'm very excited about the opportunity to start this Wednesday proclaiming the book of Daniel, so I hope you'll come 6.30, either online or in person, and so um, it might not surprise you that the Bible reading this morning, you guessed it, it's out of the book of Daniel, <laughs> so, so listen to this. Uh, the, um, Daniel and his three friends had just called a prayer meeting in response to a very serious crisis, and this is what the Bible says. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons he removes kings and raises up kings. Remember that the next time you vote. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and I praise you, O God of my fathers. Amen. And I just want to invite you this morning... To enter into the spirit of praise that Daniel reflects here in this wonderful passage. And to join us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, Daniel is so important for a variety of reasons. Of course, it's the Word of God, so that makes it important. But also, it holds the key to understanding all prophecies about the future in the Bible. If you understand Revelation to be the culmination of all the prophecies in the Bible, then Daniel, you know, that would be the X, Y, Z of prophecy, then Daniel becomes the A, B, C of prophecy. It's where it starts to really come together. So I'm excited uh, this Wednesday to share that with you. And in preparation, I want to invite you to do something concerning the book of Daniel. Yes, um, if you're willing. And that is, before Wednesday, you ready? Read the book of Daniel three times, each time completely through in one setting. So from chapter 1 to chapter 12 in one sitting, and then do that three times before Wednesday. So I don't know if I have time. It's actually not a very long book, and it's uh, pretty quick. Um, and so um, in, as part of that, I've, I've made up some cards called Question and Answers. And it says, yes, I have a question. And if you would like to take one of these with you, then as you're reading the book, uh, if you have any questions about some, what something means or, uh, you know, whatever it is about the book of Daniel, then write it down and bring it in with you Wednesday, and I will do my best to incorporate uh, that subject, that topic, those answers, that question into our study in the book of Daniel that's going to be going on for several weeks. So it'll be very exciting. I'll have these out um, in the foyer for you uh, at the end of the service. So very excited about that. We also, this morning, have um, some announcements. Um, today is our Light for the Lost uh, missions offering. We'll do that um, in a few minutes. But I wanted to remind you about it and also to encourage you to give. If you have intended to use the credit card machine, use our church app. There is an option to tell it that it's missions instead of ties, and you can use that option, and we'll know what it is. And then also, of course, keep in mind our services, 6.30 Wednesday night, where we talk about, and then each Sunday, 9 a.m. for our children's ministry, our Sunday school hour, our Christian education, and for adults and children, and also uh, our 10 a.m. worship service that you're here now, so it's a wonderful thing. Our prayer list, let me just uh, ask 
you to continue to pray for these. I, uh, I actually took a photo of the announcements and the prayer list so that I could have them with me. So from time to time I pull it up and I pray for the folks. But I just wanted to read their names to remind you to pray for them. Uh, Sister Donna Griggs' family, Sister Shannon Stewart's family, Barbara Brown, Ray and Nelda Dotson, Phil Carroll, Sandra Thomas and her family, Bobby Jenkins, Scott McLeod, Joy Turner, um, Marie Lavinghouse, Zach Leitner, uh, Mike Brown, Brandon Mack, Sister Elam, Jackie Lorenz, Doug Danley, uh, Sierra. By the way, just to give you an update on her, she was the young lady that was involved in a very serious accident a couple, a few months back. She, um, now she was in recovery and then in a nursing home for a while. She's back home. She's getting better, and uh, she has now found a job again, and she has started to drive. She says she won't go very far at a time, but she is starting to relearn how to use her body. So um, that's how serious it was. So we praise the Lord for that, and we're also uh, thanking the Lord for that, but also praying for her salvation. So um, Terry Yates, Glenn Yates, Teresa Carney, <coughs> Ashlyn Murphy, Maureen Romero, and also... Uh, uh, Brother Larry and Sister Dory Cordell are um, traveling. Let's pray for traveling mercies for them. And uh, Dory asked us to pray for her mom for medical issues. We do pray for her today. I don't know her name, but Dory's mom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, that works. And then um, someone came into my office uh, Friday and said, I know you're a pastor, and I want you to pray for um, my sister who lives in California. She's a believer. That was shocking. There are believers in California. Can you imagine that? But it's wonderful to hear that testimony. She says, but seriously, she said, um, her name's Tiffany Warner, and she's 39 years old, has three children, and has just been diagnosed with breast cancer. So let's pray for God to heal her. She loves the Lord, and, and she asked, uh, her sister came in, uh, Teresa, and asked for us to pray for her. So Tiffany Warner, 39 years old needs a touch of healing the Lord. Can we just go to the Lord and pray right now? What, what about you? Yes. Um, can you pray for Susanna? There, we need to go get an MRI done for her just to make sure that nothing's wrong with her head. Okay. But like, I, you know, like I'm actually worried about it because uh, there's a chance that she could have a tumor. So we're just hoping that she doesn't have one. What is your first name? I, you, Susanna. Susanna, thank you. You know, at my age, you just have to embarrass yourself and ask. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know exactly how to put that prayer down, but we'll pray for you. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Anyone else want to have a name to the prayer list? Anyone just needs, I need the Lord to work in my life, His will to be done. Just pray for me. Almost everybody. Uh, God bless you, and may the Lord hear your prayer. Let's just go to the Lord and pray right now. Father, we just love you. We worship you. You are the great God who is. You You can see into the darkness, but light dwells with you, Daniel said. And we praise your holy name. For you, the God who is, the God who was, the God who will always be, the one true and living God. We thank you. And, and you can do miracles. And you love us. And I pray that you would intervene in the lives of the people on our prayer list, that you'll touch them and help them in their need whether it's traveling mercies or um, a, a medical procedure or need healing in the body or whatever they need, Lord, I pray that you would touch their need. And I raise my hand over this congregation and the folks that raise their hands uh, watching us on the Internet. And I pray for the needs that we raise our hands for. And I ask you to intervene in those situations, Lord God. Do your will. Bless your people. Help us, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who are lost, that they might be saved. I ask you to intervene in the crises that are going on around the world, whether it's war or uh, pestilence or famine or earthquake or whatever's happening. I ask you to intervene and help, Lord Jesus. And I especially pray for um, Tiffany Warner, that you would touch her and heal her today. And I pray for Susanna. Bless her help her, Lord Jesus. And I pray for a good report in that regard. And I thank you and I give you glory. I just ask that you would you would just 
make yourself known among us today. Can you lift your hand and say, Lord, I just want to tell you I love you today, and I praise your holy name, and I give you glory, for you are worthy of our worship. And Lord, I thank you, I praise you, and I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, right now we would like to um, have the children come up. Uh, we are going to receive the Life for the Lost, our missions um, offering this month. It's Life for the Lost. Remember, Life for the Lost pays for um, gospel literature uh, in the language of the people used around the world. So our missionaries uh, greatly appreciate being able to have access to materials that they can use in their ministry to win the lost, no matter what language, no matter what culture, no matter what city or country they find themselves in. That's what Life of the Lost provides. It's such a valuable ministry. Our, it helps our missionaries do the ministry that God has called them to. So give us unto the Lord. And like I said, you can use our church app to give to this also. God bless you, friends. <laughs> All right, I think I'll pray. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to support our missionaries around the world and give them the tools and the literature that they need to do what you've called them to do. So bless them with their in their effort. Um, we pray that many lost people will be saved because of the missionary ministries that are going on around the world and help us to be a lighthouse in our own community for Jesus Christ ourselves. Yes, we praise you and thank you. Bless your people for their generosity. Yes. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, kids. Amen. And God bless you all. Once you give, please let's stand and let's worship the King of Kings. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. 
Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Do you remember the, Lord, the day the Lord called you out of that grave that you were in? Amen. That you left death and you entered in to life eternal. Amen. I can remember that day. I actually rehearsed that day here just yesterday. Amen. Just pondering and thinking about the glorious graciousness of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad for his grace this morning and his mercy? Praise the Lord. We're going to come to you this morning for our morning tithe and offering. Again, thank you for your giving in the missions offering this morning. Uh, they will be blessed and the world will be blessed and the light of the gospel will be shown in the midst of these dark times. Amen. Because of your giving. Amen. So we're going to give you a chance this morning to give in the morning tithe and offering. You can give in person right here. You can drop it in the box out in the foyer. we got a, a place out there uh, that serves as no contact. If you don't want to uh, uh, have any contact with uh, with anyone, that's fine. Or you can just go right on your app there, and hopefully our internet this coming week will be back up and going, and Spectrum will get us where we need to be. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. We thank you for the opportunity. Dear God, that we get to come and worship you, Lord God, in this place, whether it is in our prayers today, dear God, whether it is in our praise today, Lord God, and in our giving unto your kingdom, dear God, in the preaching of your word. Father, we just ask you to be manifested and lifted up in this place. And Father, we just pray you bless the gift and the giver of life today, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. And the church says, Amen. amen. As you give this morning, let's stand all across the sanctuary and continue to worship the Lord together. How I long to breathe the air of heaven, where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets. To look upon the one who bled to save me. Sing worthy 
is the Lamb who was slain. And on that day, we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice of a thousand generations. Sing worthy is the Lamb who Oh 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Worthy of it all. 
says that the redeemed holds the praise and holds a song that the angels only look upon and wish that they could sing. 
see him and be a part of. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Take your Bibles this morning. Go to Judges chapter number 6. Amen. Amen. i got a lot of work to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to go ahead and forewarn you. Uh, hallelujah. No, not really. Uh, God's going to do all the work. I'm just going to stand here this morning. Amen. And just let Him do what He wants to do. Praise the Lord. Judges chapter number 6. Good to see all of you today in the house of the Lord. i got a rather simple message to remind you of today. Judges chapter number 6. I want to start reading there at verse number 1. Uh, I'm going to read down through verse number 16 uh, here today. A lot of you know this story about Gideon. Amen? If you missed it last Sunday, we kind of preached in the latter end of the story. And uh, uh, the Lord had been stirring this in my heart. And I had made several references to it last Sunday. And um, I didn't over overstep it because I know it was the Spirit of the Lord telling me that I'd come back and preach on this. This, this weekend, so uh, I told you that I would come back to this, amen, but Gideon's chapter, uh, not Gideon, but Judges chapter number 6, let's start reading there at verse number 1, amen, it says, then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and so the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because the Midianites, the children of the children of Israel made for themselves dens and caves and strongholds which are in the mountains. Let me ask you this as I read through this this morning. Have you ever found yourself in an unaccommodating Come on. situation? Mm -hmm. I thought so. I know where I'm right where I'm at this morning. Amen. Verse 3. And so it was whenever Israel had sown, you know, planted seed, the Midianites would come up, and also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them, and then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza, and they would leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents coming in as numerous as locusts and both they and their camels without number and they would enter the land to destroy it. And so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel. They cried out to the Lord. I told you last Sunday, never negate the fact that you can always cry out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And in verse number 7, it said, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, I love this, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel. Thank God for a messenger. Amen. Who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Verse number 11. And he says, And now the angel of the Lord came and he sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Orpha which belonged to Joash the Abiserite. While his son Gideon threshed weed in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now many would say, before I go on further, i got three more verses to read. Many would say, verse number 13, Gideon is arguing with the Lord. But I would say he wasn't arguing with the Lord. He was in fact intact in his faith. But he was just questioning the very statement. To have God to validate what he just said to him. Do you see what God said to him? He says, the Lord is with you mighty men about. Has God ever put something upon your heart in the midst of a situation that was contradictory of what was going on? And this is what your response was, I'm sure. Look at verse 13. And Gideon said to him, 
Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told about us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But, the, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Have you ever answered God that way? Come on. God, if you're really here in this situation, why is this happening? Are you with me this morning? Amen. Verse 14. Verse 15. No, verse 14 for me. And then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours. Interesting phrase. And you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And so he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. A whole bunch of problems Come on. to a solution. And verse 16 says, And the Lord said to him, he reiterates it one more time, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Come on. And I want to use for a subject this morning, if I can, go in this might. Go in this might. I want to find out what that might is this morning. What was God talking about here? Will you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, your goodness, and your kindness. God, this morning, uh, Lord, I sense your great presence in this house. And God, I know that in my spirit, you have confirmed that this word is for this hour and for this moment. And so, Lord, I stand on the promise that it is going to go forth and it is going to accomplish that that you have sent it to do today, dear God, because too many of your people, dear Heavenly Father, are not living and not walking and they are not dwelling in the might, dear Heavenly Father that you have given unto them. Dear Lord, I just pray today that we would arise and step into the might of the Almighty God today and that we would begin to live and move and abide in the might of the Lord today. And Father, I just thank you today and I love you, dear God, for your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. And we all pray it this morning in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus. Let the church say Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap today as you're being seated in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen? You know, the book of Judges is a book that is sad in its content. But not only is it sad in its content, but it's hope-filled and it's glorious as well in its content. It's sad because this generation that the book of Judges is being written about is the generation that came up after Joshua and the elders that is now in the forefront. And it is said about this generation that they did not know the Lord, nor did they know the mighty works that had been manifested and that had been done at the hand of God Almighty. And so therefore, because of this reason, they had turned their eyes towards idols and they had begun to follow after the flesh and they had begun to do what they felt was right in their own sight without a, a moral compass and a moral way uh, in regard because they was ignoring the one true God of Israel uh, and they was going after the gods of the nations that was around them. What a sad, sad uh, 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 content that we would find uh, that after the Joshua and after the, the, uh, the Caleb's and after the, the elders that had passed there, that somehow or another, this generation had fell through the cracks and had not been taught well, or, or maybe they just willfully uh, ignored the fact that Jehovah God was the only God. Whatever the case may be and however they might have found themselves. Uh, the fact is now uh, is the godly leadership uh, had been uh, laid to rest uh, and now it was time uh, for this generation to pick up the mantle. Listen to me and I want you to, oh my God, I feel this push in my spirit. Uh, uh -huh. I can't live off of the coattail of the mantle uh, of my daddy that uh -huh. was before me. And I can't live off of the mantle and the coattail of the stories of those that was before me. I can draw strength and I can see and not forget of how God moved in their lives. But the fact is today is I've got 
to settle it in my spirit and I got to make certain sure that the God of my daddy and the God of those that was before me is the God for me today that he is the same God yesterday today and forever and that I choose to follow him all the days of my life I can't hang it on the coattails of somebody else and said I didn't make it because they didn't arise no the arising inside of my life is the choice that I've got to make that I got to get myself up and shake myself off and grab up the the mantle of God and put it upon me that has been passed down from generation to generation and say the God of my ancestors show up and be faithful and true as you was then and I will walk in your ways and in your statutes. Amen. Amen. But this was not this generation's choice. Sad content. Think about it. They saw the Red Sea stand up on its end. Come on. Let me take a little bit of creative illustration. When they walk through on dry, dry land, could you imagine the animals that they got to see floating around in the waters beside them? Come, Come on. on, somebody. They was in somebody else's ecosystem. Come on. Walking through on dry land. Could you imagine all of the, the chariots of the, the enemy that come in behind them and, and they're sitting there trembling with fear and all of a sudden God just quits breathing over the water and it goes whoosh. And here come a chariot wheel and here come the bridle of a horse and here come the spears and, and everything as it was washing up on the seashore. And all of a sudden uh, there was a praise that broke out in the camp uh, that they shouted and praised them to God uh, that the enemy that had pursued them had now been destroyed from behind them not to pressure them anymore. These are the things that happened in that generation. And these are the things that they had chose to ignore. And these are the things in Many other things. Sad content. A generation that was not following their God. Their God who had chose and showed Himself to be true and faithful. But you know, with this sad content this morning, there's hopeful content. And there's glorious content. Because when you read here in the book of, uh, in the book of Judges, you see in verse number 16 of chapter number 2, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. That was written on the heels of, a, of the verses that said that this generation had done evil in the sight of God. And they had went after the, the gods of the nations around them. And attached them to that. And God in His mercy and in His grace and in His loving kindness. You know what He did? And listen, in the midst of that generation. Listen, there was a remnant. And He said, out of that remnant and out of that nation. Periodically through time. God in His mercy and God in His grace. He would raise up a judge. Why a godly leadership, one that would walk in the power and the anointing of God's Spirit, and He would lead the children of Israel out of the bondage that they was in, and they would get to experience the goodness and the grace of God Almighty inside of their lives. That sheds a whole lot of hope for my life and for your life today. Amen? This story of Gideon as a judge over Israel is one of those moments recorded and it is marked not only with sadness, but it is marked with hope as well. You know, the details of this moment of our scripture that I just read to you this morning, the details of it was is that Israel had just went through 40 years of peace. Think about it. Let me walk it slow with you this morning. Amen. We've got time, don't we? Let me talk to you a little bit today. Forty years of peace. Now, me, this is just when I when I when I've been reading through this, this was a question that came in my mind. My God, how in the world you've gone forty years? And listen, it don't matter if Deborah and Barak were still leading the charge or not. I've been through forty years of peace. 
without any oppression from the nations around me. I have got to dwell in the power and in the provision of God Almighty. But the moment the leadership, that, 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 that generation of leadership, Barak and Deborah, they had passed on from this life. They was in no more leading. They went on home to be with the Lord. What does the Bible say? Immediately after that moment, it said there in chapter number 6 of verse number 1, that the children of Israel, their hearts turned and they began to do evil in the sight of God Almighty. My goodness, Lord, help us. Sadness. 30 years of peace. And they throw it all away for an idol. Mm. My goodness. You go along in your life and you're doing well and all of a sudden you throw it away for a moment of something. A moment of losing your cool. You rocking along. Have you ever had them good good long day, the longevity of days in your life uh, to where you just coast along and everything's been going good and all of a sudden it looks like the wind gets knocked out of you, the rug gets pulled out from under you, something happens, you get tripped up, uh, you're not paying attention, you're not being diligent, you're not being vigilant and all of a sudden the enemy comes out of nowhere and he just sucker punches you one good time. Uh, and you find yourself falling and fell down in a failure. And the fact is, is you, you look at it and say, My God, I was going through such peace. But yet, in fact, now I find myself in the misery of my failures and my decisions. Amen. Am I speaking to anybody? Amen. Maybe not here, but you online this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we all got it together in the house today. Amen. Amen. So now... God says, because you've done evil, He gives them over. He sells them into slavery to the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the nations of the East. For seven years. For seven years. Think of this. The children of Israel would go out. They would plow. They would plant. They would tend to it. The Lord would rain upon it. And here comes the harvest. And about the time harvest time was ready. Year number one. Here come the Midianites. Here come the Amalekites. And all the people of the east. On their camels and all of their livestock. Uh, that was as many as the locusts and numbered as the sands of the sea. Uh, and they would mount themselves up against Israel and they would come through. Listen to me. Now, I read the scripture here again uh, last night and this morning. Listen to me. It didn't say that these that these uh, nations come in and harvested it. No, it said they come in to destroy it. My God. Let me tell you something. What God gives you, the devil can't afford to take from you because he can't obtain it because it's too right, it's too good, and it's too righteous. He don't want what God has given you. He just wants to destroy it inside of your life and stamp it out because if you would dare to walk in what God has given you and what God has done for you, then the reality is it's the Satan. He wouldn't have no place. But listen to me. The enemy came in to the camp year after year after year to stomp out the harvest of God in Israel's life. The harvest. That was the only time they showed up. That's why you better plow the ground in your life and have some good ground for the seed to fall in. Because if you hard-hearted and the seed fall on the wayside, Satan will come by and snatch that seed up. Like an old ravaged bird, he'll, he'll, he'll dismiss it, he'll get it out of your life. You better hang on to the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone upon the Word of God because it is the life and the liberty of the kingdom of God. Don't you let the enemy stomp that out inside of your life. Amen? They would come in year, year number one, stomp it all out. Year number two, stomp it all out. Year number three, Stomped it all out. 
somewhere in the process of this, uh, these people, the, the, this this nation, look, just just picture this with me. Uh, they was they was in this moment, uh, and every time that uh, when the enemy would come in, uh, it says here that because the Midianites uh, had got the upper hand, and because the Midianites uh, was strong over the nation, the Bible says here uh, that the children of Israel. Now listen to this. Uh, the, the apple of God's eye, the blessed of God Almighty, the blessed of Jehovah, the chosen of God Almighty. It said that they, that they, they left their chosen spot and they're in their, in their, in their place that God had placed them. And it said they went up into a mountain. And it said they went up and they began to dig caves into the side of a mountain. And they began to dig dens. And they began to hide themselves because of what had happened. And because of their choice. And because of their situation. The fact is, is due to the fear of the enemy coming into the camp and stomping out the blessings of God. They left their post and they found themselves in unaccommodated situations to where they left the goodness of their home and they found themselves in a den. They left the goodness of their home and they found themselves in a cave. They left their goodness of their home and they found themselves in a stronghold. Have you ever committed something or done something or fell to something inside of your life that you throw down the blessings of God and all it left you was was a den, a cave, and a stronghold. Listen to me. God did not give you life to live in a den. He didn't give you life to live in a cave. And he didn't give you life to be bound in a stronghold. You better praise the Lord God in this place. Hallelujah. I said He didn't leave you. He didn't save you. He hasn't come to you to, for you to dwell in a cave, in a den, or a stronghold. That's not my opinion. That's the Word of God. Yeah. Help us, Jesus, my God. They were in a den, in a cave, or a stronghold. What do you get in a den? Nothing? Nothing. Cold, dreary rock. Darkness. In Daniel's day, they kept the lions in the den. Come on. The problem ain't even really the enemy coming in and stomping out the harvest. This is dropped in my spirit. You ready for the download? Come on. The devil's real aim is to shove you out of the place that God has appointed you to either a den, a cave, or a stronghold because that's where the lion dwells. My, and I'm not talking about the lion of the tribe of Judah. But I'm talking about the lion of Satan who walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It ain't all about the storm out of the harvest field is to drive you out of the blessings of God Almighty so that you'll shove yourself back in a den in a cave so that in your seclusion and all by yourself and all by your lonesome where there isn't no light and there isn't no movement of God you find yourself isolated and alone for the whispers of Satan and the cries of his lies and the deceitfulness that comes your way and you believe the narrative that it cannot be any better than what it is because you have found yourself in a den and a cave and a stronghold and you're okay to be there. Jesus, help us today. Let me... Mm. They found themselves in a den, in a cave, in a stronghold. Why was they in a den in a state, cave in a stronghold? Because they had chose to do evil in the sight of God. That was their consequence. I heard a preacher say, and this is a rebuttal. This is a rebuttal. I heard a preacher. Let me tell you something. In the midst of our messes, God does not send His blessings. Because if He blessed you in your mess, then you would say, it's okay for me to be messy. And in my mess, God will bless me 
anyways. No, he let Israel be turned over to their mess so that they might see the blessing that they had left. So that the only thing they had to do was cry. That's all they had to do was cry. And we're going to get to this, uh, we're going to get to this, uh, uh, the might that you walk in or, or go in this might in just a minute. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. Their only choice because they had done evil in the sight of God was to be turned over to the gods that they served and turned over to the choices that they made. And only the, the only outcome of that was that they had dens and caves and strongholds in their lives. Well, you say, well, preacher, huh? I'm not one of those who have turned my life over uh, to the gods of this world uh, and to the gods of the nations around me. That's okay. Uh, you might be like Gideon this morning. Uh, because see, here's the thing as I read into Gideon. Gideon has caught a lot of flack in his life. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, Gideon was not one who had turned himself over to the evil. Uh, it was his father uh, who had done it. His father had erected the, uh, the idol. It was his father's city. It was the father in which he was at. But the Bible says that Gideon, while everybody else was running and they was hiding in the dens and they was hiding in the caves, the Bible says that Gideon stayed faithful and true. He got out there and gathered up what he could gather up and he hid himself over there in the wine press and he continued to tread out the grain for his family. Somebody's got to get up and take the responsibility. If the head of the house wouldn't do it, which was Gideon's daddy, then Gideon said, I'll be the faithful one and that's who God is looking for it's the one who is going to be faithful even in the midst of the hell and the storms and the high waters and guess what the Bible said that God showed up in, in Gideon's solitude while he's being faithful listen to me it might not have seemed much it might not have seemed that Gideon was going to get a hand up on anything but Gideon said I know that my God is faithful you say well how do you know that because the scripture here let me find it for you let me read it to you this morning the scripture I am way off of what I had typed out there so here we go listen to me Gideon said to the Lord, he said, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers had told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Here's the reality of what I want you to understand. Gideon understood the sovereign hand of God and God's interaction with His people. Do you see that? God's sovereign hand and God's interaction, His sovereign interaction for His people. Have you ever wrestled with God and said, you know, God, if you're in the midst of this, things should be better. If Gideon didn't believe God was with them, then why was Gideon doing what he was doing? If Gideon didn't believe that God was with him, why would God show up and say and call Gideon a mighty man of valor? He didn't even believe the own testimony that God would say about Gideon himself. In the midst of what was going on. Listen, you don't understand. I, I've, walked, I've walked through places in my life. I've said these exact words. God, if, you, if your anointing is upon me, then how can this be going on? How, how did this happen? Hello? What's going on, God? If I'm favored, my life sure doesn't look favored. Right now. You ever been there? But even in saying that, Gideon's willingness to gather the grain, to stay with the blessing. Gideon's willingness to say, Yes, Lord, I'll go tear down the altars of Baal. I'll cut down 
the idols, and he did just that. Gideon believed God. Now here's the thing. God said, Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. And, God, and Gideon said, if God is with us, this, 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 and that. I break that to you. But then he tells Gideon. Listen to what he says in verse 14. Oh, oh wow, I'm going to put it up here in my Bible. Then the Lord turned to him. And he said, go in this might of yours. Interesting. What was the might of Gideon? What was his might? Well, let's look at the story. Gideon was hiding behind the wine press. There ain't a whole lot of, there ain't a whole lot of might there, is there? He was trading out all that he could trade out. In fear of the Midianites, there ain't a whole lot of might there. He didn't believe that he was a mighty man of valor. There ain't a whole lot of might there. Now this is just process of elimination. This is looking at the text. So the only might that I can find within the text was the fact that that Gideon believed that God was with him. That's all I can find because it is mentioned twice within these two or three verses here. The introduction of the Lord was, what did he say? The introduction was this. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of it. Gideon grasped and asked some questions. Verse 14, the Lord turned and looked at him and said, Go in this might of yours, Gideon. And he says, And you shall save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Listen, I have, no, he says, Have I not sent you? Hmm. Okay. So God is with him. And now God who is with him is sending him. <laughs> and then he goes on, listen. And then he said, oh my Lord. Here's, sounds like Moses here, you know. <laughs> oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest. Moses said, I can't speak well, Lord. Gideon says, I'm the weakest. I'm the least in my father's house. David being the youngest of all, but you know. And then the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. The go in this might is going in the reality that God is with you. And here's the thing. God was not only with Gideon, but He was still with the whole nation. God had never forsaken the nation. Let me tell you something. God does not forsake His people. God has not forsaken humanity. Are you hearing me? I don't care where you find yourself this morning. I don't care what's going on inside of your life. But the fact is, is listen to me. You say, well, I've walked so far from God. That is a lie from the devil. Come listen on. to me. I want you to understand something. The presence of the Lord is with you. Listen, you can't walk away from the presence of God. Now, you might not sense it, and God might not intervene, and you might not, you might not be experiencing the power of His presence. But you know what the Bible tells me in Psalms 51? David said that when he did 
what he did with Bathsheba. He said, you know what? He said, I did it before you, God. So that when David was committing the sin of adultery and murdering the man, God was standing right there while it was going on. David done it before God. So the fact is, is that no matter where your life is at this morning, God has been walking with you all along the way. At every failure, God has been there. At every crossroad, God has been there. At every letdown, God has been there. At every struggle, God has been there. You know why He's there? Because the Bible says that He stays close to us. In, in Acts chapter 17, that we might call upon Him and reach out and grab hold of Him. If He was far from us, we couldn't have Him. But He stays close. That at the chance you would cry out. I've come to tell you this morning, the devil has beat you down enough and said, God ain't with you. That's a lie. God is with you. He's walked with you everywhere that you're at. He'll walk with you tomorrow. He'll walk with you in all your deceptions. He'll listen to me. You got to call on him. You got to call out to him. And he will send you a messenger, a prophet, a word. The church by your way to shine the light on the deception that you're walking in. Come on. He ain't never left you. He ain't never left me. For you Gideons out there, you say this society sure has changed. How can God be in the midst of it? Well, you know what the Bible says? Greater is God that is in the child of God than he that is in the world. God ain't never left you. So what is this saying? What am I trying to tell you this morning? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Listen. The mic is. Understand this. God is present with you. Amen? Amen. Let me explain it to you better this way. I'll use me. And my son is an illustration. Me and my son, we live in the same house. I'm present. He's there. He's in the house. He's living. He's doing. Is he engaging me? Probably not. He's doing his own thing. I'm present. I take him about everywhere he goes, and me or my wife, one of us, we take him. I'm present. Just because I'm present, that doesn't mean that he experiences me personally. But the moment he calls, I engage. If he needs my help, he calls, I engage. That never negates the fact that I'm present. The point I'm trying to make is, is this. God is present. He is a very present help. If you will call on Him for help. You say, well, I'm called on Him for help. Then go in that mind. What does the Bible say? Draw nigh unto God. He will draw nigh unto you. Then resist. And He will flee. A lot of us is trying to resist before we call. And before we draw nigh. And before God draws nigh. We try to resist first. Amen. Go in this might. The might is, is that God is with you. Amen. Saint of God, in every season of society, God is with us. Amen. What was Jesus' name that was given? Emmanuel. God with us. 
You say, well, he's not on this earth no more. I beg to differ. The Bible says that it was expedient for him to go that he might send back the promise of the Father, another comforter, just like him, the Spirit of Christ, to dwell in you for forever. Amen. He's with you. Everywhere. And in all places. Through all things. To do what? To allow you to live. To bring you out of the dens. The caves. The strongholds. To flush the land of your life. Of the destruction. Of sin. And Satan. Inside. Of your life. The Bible says this scripture, this scripture was sent out this morning in a, in a group text of ministers. And I want to read it to you out of Isaiah 43. Listen to what it says. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I have called you by your name, your mind. When you pass through the waters, not if, when, I will be with you. And through the waters, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And verse number 5 says this, Fear not, for I am with you. This man Gideon, listen, here's my enemy. This man Gideon got up singularly right by himself, knowing that God was with him. He went, <clears throat> cut down the altar and the and the uh, and the and the idols in his own home city, made a call among the nations. God dwindled it down to three hundred men. Because he didn't want Israel to be lifted up in pride, saying they delivered themselves. And as one man, Gideon went in and stood around the edge of the enemy's camp and done what God told him to do. And the enemy consumed himself and fled the land. And God gave peace. Now for all of the rest of the people that was not involved in Gideon, you know what they done? They followed Gideon. Let me tell you something. You know why God puts godly people in your life? For you to follow them. You know why God gave you gifts the church to the world? So that people would follow the true church. And I say that very, very conservatively. Because there's so many churches out there that it's not the true church. They're not teaching the truth and they're wrong. The week before I got saved, I'm going to share this in close because it goes along with what I'm saying here. April the 17th, 2005, on a Sunday night, I walked in this sanctuary right here. To obey a wish that my mother wanted me to do every year was for her birthday come to church with her. I was a week late because her birthday was on the 10th. And I intentionally missed it on the 10th because I really didn't want to go. But aren't you glad for the conviction of God? Get up and go bless your mama. So I did that night. I, did, I made sure I did it on Sunday night too because there wouldn't be a lot of people. And, you know. Come in and I sat down on that back row. Right over there in that corner. Brother Adam preached that, that night. At the end of that service, I confessed that I had a major addiction inside of my life. And I knew that if I didn't get delivered from that addiction, that addiction I would die. In fact, I was, I was on the law's list. I was being watched. And it wouldn't have been long before I would have done time for what I was doing. 
I come clean that night. And from that night on, the first thing I did, I didn't, I didn't ask God to save me that night. But I did say, you know, Lord, I want to be clean of this. I don't want this in my life no more. So two things happened. I said, God, I give it up. I said, if you'll let me live, don't let me die. I said, I'll give it up. And I felt like I was going to die at times. But God brought me along. But the second thing I done was, is that week I surrounded myself. I changed my atmosphere. <laughs> And I quit hanging out and going to the places that I used to go and the people that I used to talk to and I surrounded myself with godly people and I would put on preaching and godly music and change the atmosphere Come on. in my life. Thank you. And April the 24th, 2005, I walked back in this sanctuary that Sunday morning. I came down to the altar right over here on this corner and I gave my heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, a free man, set free by the power of God Almighty. You know why? You know why I did all of that? Because I walked in the might of God that I knew He was with me. Come on. <coughs> I followed the leading of godly people out of the place of where I was. Gideon led the Israelites out of the dens, the caves, and the strongholds. Not all the nation fought. They were still afraid in the dens, the caves, and the strongholds. But somebody walked in the might of God. And the others followed in the might of God because it was through the leadership, God's presence is made real to people. So listen to me. This mess about I don't need church, you'll die without it. Amen. This mess about I can hang around whoever I want to and I'm yeah, go right ahead. Hang where you want to hang. You'll find yourself hanging your hat there and Taking your boots off there and hanging out and staying where this it is. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. important that we know that the presence of God is with us. Yes. Go in that might, yes. no matter what we face, and God will bring us out and see us through. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy laden, stand with me this morning. And he says, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Jesus is saying to every one of us in this sanctuary and everyone that is watching, He's saying right now, come to me. Go in this might that I am present, that I am here and I want my presence to be manifested in its glorious power inside of your life. And I will lead you out and I will lead you through. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I love you and I thank you and I praise you. God, with everything that we face and everything we deal with and everything that we are going through in our life, the only might that we can truly have is to know that you are present, that you are with us, and you are there to do one thing, and that is to lead us out. That is to deliver us. That is to save us, sanctify us, and one day bring us to full glorification. We gotta to submit to your presence. We gotta to submit to your presence. We gotta to submit to your person, Jesus Christ. 